Item number SCP-3713. Object class, Catter. Neutralized. Footnote 1. Pending reclassification. See Addendum 3713-4 for more details. Special Containment Procedures Dr. Robert Dorr is to act as a psychotherapist slash counselor for Person of Interest 3713 and is to meet with them at least once every month, utilizing audiovisual communication platforms when necessary. Footnote 2. Such as Skype or Discord voiceover internet protocol. If any anomalous activity is discovered or suspected, Dr. Dorer is to report the development immediately. Otherwise, sessions are allowed to remain private and unrecorded as per the will of the Ethics Committee. Archived Containment Procedures During an SCP-3713 event, incoming traffic is to be diverted under the guise of military operations. Should an SCP-3713 event be detected, a team of D-Class personnel equipped with basic audiovisual recording equipment are to be immediately deployed to the location to document the event. Any records of activity are to be removed from all public knowledge. Witnesses and SCP-3713-A instances are to be amnesticized following standard procedures. All D-Class are to be recovered immediately and the footage captured is to be extensively reviewed. Any records of activity are to be purged from all public knowledge as well as witnesses amnesticized to reduce suspicions. Description SCP-3713 was a series of reality degradation events originating at 49.90 degrees north and 97.14 degrees west, Winnipeg, Canada, and ending at 18.24 degrees north and 66.04 degrees west, Caguas, Puerto Rico between November 17, 1898 and August 7, 2015. These events only affected cities legally recognized by the U.S. government and extended roughly one kilometer outside of the city's legal boundaries. Only a single city would be affected at a time. When an SCP-3713 event occurred, the population, defined as SCP-3713-A, began to behave as though they were members of a cast in a musical production, with the set and setting equivalent to the real-life locality. The plot of each SCP-3713 event changed between instances but tended to be roughly determined by events already set in motion before the occurrence of said event. For example, a major plot point during event SCP-3713-13 was the cancellation of an annual Christmas parade, which had already been planned for several weeks prior. A random group within the city, ranging from four to six individuals, defined as SCP-3713-A Prime, would be the focus of some sort of plot, often accompanied by a supporting cast consisting of an additional five to ten individuals. Any new objects or people entering the area of effect would slowly become subject to the anomaly's effects and be converted into a prop or actor. For objects, this effect was almost instantaneous, while for people, this process could take anywhere from 5 minutes to 6 hours, depending on the person's proximity to SCP-3713-A Prime. This effect was stronger the more SCP-3713-A Prime individuals were gathered in one place. Following the conclusion of the event, roughly 99% of objects and all affected individuals would revert to normal. SCP-3713 events would follow a vague prologue, Act 1, Intermission, Act 2 Pattern, with a possible second intermission, and Act 3. The prologue was designated as the time in which SCP-3713's effects first show, beginning with the conversion of many objects into props, exact specifications difficult to measure and thus uncertain. Most members of SCP-3713-A would begin to lose intricacies of emotional expression and social interaction. Intermissions would be noted by all members of SCP-3713-A returning to their home, when applicable, and having between 0 and 18 members disappear and reappear at the beginning of the next act. After all acts are done, all members of SCP-3713-A would gather at the edge of SCP-3713's area of effect and bow. As soon as bows were finished, SCP-3713's effects would disappear. Members of SCP-3713-A would return to their homes and resume normal behaviors and routines the next day. 
Due to an as of yet unidentified anti-memetic effect, all SCP-3713-A members would find nothing odd about the SCP-3713 event unless interrogated. SCP-3713-A were considered mundane once more after amnesticization. Addendum 3713-1 Abridged list of recorded SCP-3713 events. Footnote 3 for a full list, consult the current SCP-3713 Overseer. Event SCP-3713-7 Location and Date Hortonville, Wisconsin, June 19, 1937 Plot The first musical piece, identifying the main member of SCP-3713-A Prime, centered around a small boy being raised by his grandparents lamenting on how they abuse him. Shortly afterwards, he found a group of small, less than 8 centimeters tall, humanoids which call themselves the Hows. The boy became emperor of the Hows and used them to kill his grandparents. A role reversal occurred, wherein the boy became mad with power and attempted to take over as mayor of the city. The event climaxed when the Hows fought back against him and reclaimed their independence. Notes The Hows have since been contained and classified as SCP- Event SCP-3713-11 Location and Date Galpolis, Ohio, April 4th, 1963 Plot SCP Breach containment, incapacitating and wounding several researchers. The protagonists, MTF Lambda-14, the extras, attempted to survive and recontain the anomaly. It was revealed that the site director had released SCP- in an effort of world domination, the MTF unit uncovered more clues about SCP and the site director, allowing them to set up a trap for both of them. The event climaxed in a musical number, titled Why Do We Even Try, sung by SCP, the site director, and all of the agents, after which the MTF unit successfully recontained SCP and detained the site director. Notes Several SCPs were neutralized following the event as they had been converted into plastic replicas and did not revert back to their anomalous form. SCP was successfully recontained. Event SCP-3713-16 Location and Date Brickhaven, North Carolina, September 28, 1995 Plot Instance began with a musical number involving a bank heist. The police investigated the crime, and eventually one ended up undercover in a drug ring. Footnote 4. Supposedly secret meetings were kept in relatively easy to observe places, and SCP-3713-A instances showed little concern over others hearing their conversations despite their subject matter. The story soon refocused to include D590300, sent in with recording equipment. The citizens began to question D590300's origins. Once she told them in song, titled, We Stay in the Dark, So You May Live in the Light, they began to hail her as their savior and created a cult. D590300 attempted to get people to stop worshipping her, eventually teaming up with the drug ring to hide herself from the public. When the cult worshipping continued despite her absence, the undercover cop confronted the cult and attempted to convince them via song, titled, No One Wants the D. The plot ended with all cult members burning their robes and returning to normal city life, and the drug ring returning the stolen money due to taking a liking to the undercover cop character. Notes Containment procedures remain unchanged. A vote by level 4, 3713 personnel concluded at 19 to 10 in favor of maintaining current procedures. Amnestic successfully administrated. Event SCP-3713-18 Location and date. Caguas, Puerto Rico, June 26, 2015. Plot. The event began with the announcement of a particularly extravagant school play. SCP-3713-A Prime was comprised of several friends who were going to audition but met many problems in the process. Every member of SCP-3713-A Prime overcame various obstacles preventing them from auditioning, except for two of them. Camila Marquez, and Eric Pantillo. It was revealed in a musical number that these two members of SCP-3713-A Prime were in love with each other but didn't know it, and wished not to be in the play because of the presence of one another. 
By collaborating with the secondary cast, both Camila and Eric were led downtown, where a musical number involving a large number of SCP-3713-A was performed by all members of SCP-3713-A Prime, except Camila. Eric was ultimately too scared to profess his love and it resulted in failure. However, Camila and Eric decided to participate in the play regardless. Act 3 involved the play being put on, where Eric ultimately confessed his love for Camila in the final act of the play. Notes This was the first and only event where an individual was recorded deviating from the normal behavior. See Addendum 3713-2 for further details. Addendum 3713-2 Further details on event SCP-3713-18. Despite being a part of SCP-3713-A Prime, Camila Marquez, aka Person of Interest 3713, never sang throughout the entirety of the SCP-3713 event, and in several parts deviated significantly from what would have been the presumed storyline of SCP-3713. Although initially calm during the events, presumably thinking that her friends were playing a prank or practicing during the first musical events, Person of Interest 3713 expressed fear and confusion in many of the events following these, especially music events which involved large amounts of people. During the bulk of SCP-3713-18, members of SCP-3713-A ignored her behaviors and continued as if she were acting normally. Person of Interest 3713 expressed intense confusion at the end of Act 3, where she was surrounded by singing members of SCP-3713-A, and then forced to follow the crowd prior to the ending of Act 3. Person of Interest 3713 broke from the crowd of SCP-3713-A and ran south from Caguas towards Guyama. As Person of Interest 3713 approached the boundary of SCP-3713-18, the area of effect began to expand about one kilometer ahead of her. Upon reaching Guayama, Person of Interest 3713 was met with a crowd of over 1,000 SCP-3713-A instances. All instances were singing a song, the main chorus line being, Someone is slacking. Footnote 5. The full repeated line was, Someone is slacking, someone is drowning, someone is drowning, and we're drowning with her. Person of Interest 3713 was picked up by the crowd, but escaped by breaking a window and climbing through it. After reaching the top of the three-story building, Person of Interest 3713 held their position for roughly an hour before SCP-3713-A members began to climb onto the roof through the ventilation systems. Person of Interest 3713 was forced to back towards the edge of the building, at which point she turned around and jumped. Just before hitting the ground, Person of Interest 3713 disappeared. Three hours after the disappearance, all effects of SCP-3713 ceased. Members of SCP-3713-A in Caguas were dehydrated and malnourished due to standing in one place for roughly 72 hours. 18 lives were lost to various car crashes or bleeding out due to Person of Interest 3713's escape efforts. A mass amnesticization and disinformation campaign was soon underway, and medical attention was given to injured individuals. Person of Interest 3713 reappeared on the street, unconscious but alive, with several bruises on her head and large gashes of unknown origin on both her forearms. Person of Interest 3713 was immediately taken under intensive care. After two weeks of recovery, Person of Interest 3713 was returned to society and was assigned to a Foundation therapist. Person of Interest 3713 has since shown cinematophobia, theatrophobia, heliophobia, post-traumatic stress disorder, which is often triggered in tandem with the previous three fears and a highly increased interest in photography and cinematography, despite her fear of it. For the sake of Person of Interest 3713's mental health, her mother, Cecilia Marquez, has been made somewhat aware of the events that transpired and the consequences of sharing information. No SCP-3713 events have occurred since, as of the time of writing. Last updated, August 9th, 2024. Addendum 3713-3 Recovered information from Person of Interest 3713 during intensive care. After one week of recovery, Person of Interest 3713 was able to speak. 
A recorded interview was conducted immediately after, which is transcribed below. Interview with Person of Interest 3713 Interviewer, Dr. Robert Dorr Interviewee, Person of Interest 3713, Camila Marquez Conducted August 8, 2015 Notes Person of Interest 3713 lies in a hospital bed in the middle of the room with a chair to her right and the door to her left. Interview was conducted in Spanish and translated to English for ease of reading. Footnote 6 to read the original interview, contact an SCP-3713 research director or any personnel of 4-3713 clearance. Begin log. Dr. Dorr enters slowly, carrying with them a clipboard with paper and a pencil. Dr. Dorr. Hello, Camila. I'm Dr. Dorr, but you can call me Robert. I'm here to ask you about some questions about your experiences from the past few days. Is that all right with you? Person of Interest 3713 stares at Dr. Dorr, but does not respond. We can go as slow as you'd like, and you don't have to get it all out today. However much is comfortable for you. Is that alright? May I sit down? Person of Interest 3713 stares at Dr. Dorr, but otherwise remains unresponsive. Seeing no response, Dr. Dorr sits next to Person of Interest 3713's bed. We're just trying to understand what's going on. It's been very confusing for all of us. Any help you could give us would help us all in the end. Person of Interest 3713 continues to stare at Dr. Dorr. After 15 seconds of no response, Dr. Dorr notes the behavior on their clipboard. Person of Interest 3713. You're not singing. Dr. Dorr. No, no one will be singing. The singing is over. Nobody is acting anymore. Person of Interest 3713 turns to look at the door and mouths the English word exit. Am I out? Yes, you're out. You're out for good. You're safe here. Person of Interest 3713 turns to face Dr. Door again. Is there an outside? If you go through that door, walk down the hall, take a right and a left, and then go up the elevator, yes. You can see the sun and flowers and clouds. I can? Not until you are well, but eventually, yes. Things will go back to normal. It's real? Person of Interest 3713 turns to look at the door again. Yes, it's real. Just as real as you or me. I can open it if you want to see. Person of Interest 3713 continues to stare at the door and mouths the word buhos, owls, in English. As Person of Interest 3713 continues to stare at the door, Dr. Dorr gets up and moves towards it. Upon reaching the door, they slowly open it. Person of Interest 3713 continues to stare, but is otherwise unresponsive. Does this prove it? Person of Interest 3713 nods. Dr. Dorr closes the door and returns to their seat. How are you feeling? Person of Interest 3713 does not look away from the door. I'm scared. You're completely safe here. We make sure of it. There is nothing to be afraid of. I'm being watched. Who's watching you? Person of Interest 3713 turns around to face Dr. Dorr and drops to a whisper. The audience. How are they watching? Person of Interest 3713 does not respond, but continues to look at Dr. Dorr. Dr. Dorr points to the camera in the corner of the room through which this log was recorded. Person of Interest 3713 shakes their head and points to each of Dr. Dorr's eyes individually. Would you be more comfortable if I wasn't looking at you? Person of Interest 3713 returns to looking at the door. Would you like me to come back later? Person of Interest 3713 remains unresponsive. Dr. Dorr takes notes, gets up, and then kneels in front of Person of Interest 3713 on the other side of her bed. Person of Interest 3713 looks at Dr. Dorr. I will be back this time tomorrow. Is that all right? If there is anything I can do for you, just ask. Tell the doctors and nurses here to get Robert or Dr. Dorr and I'll be by your side as quickly as I can. We're all here to help you, okay? Person of Interest 3713 does not respond and returns to staring at the door. 
Dr. Dorr gets up and leaves the room. End log. Further interviews yielded no new information, with Person of Interest 3713 continuing their fascination with the door and showing general paranoia. Due to Person of Interest 3713's knowledge of SCP-3713 and their unique mental disorders, the Ethics Committee ruled that Person of Interest 3713 be returned to society without amnestics and see a Foundation therapist made aware of the situation in full. This arrangement has continued to the time of writing. Last updated August 9th, 2024. The following video, named as Two Circled Dots, was recovered from Person of Interest 3713's phone. Despite the limitations of the phone, the video was recorded in 3840 by 2160, 120 frames per second, and lasts 18 minutes, 26 seconds while only taking up 3 megabytes of space. Video was taken on July 31st at 2348, beginning at the exact moment Person of Interest 3713 disappeared for the last time during SCP-3713-18. The video appears to be filmed from multiple points of view with lapses in time. Video discovered on Person of Interest 3713's phone. Begin transcription. Zero seconds. The video begins immediately with the sound of Person of Interest 3713 screaming, which goes silent at one second. The view is entirely black, though the sound of an air conditioner can be heard. Soft, strained breathing can be made out. 18 seconds. Shuffling can be heard and the crash of something heavy being knocked over coinciding with Person of Interest 3713 whimpering. The sound of the air conditioner continued uninterrupted for another 30 seconds. 50 seconds. A very dim blue light comes from the left of the screen as a curtain uncovers what appears to be a window. Person of Interest 3713's breathing becomes faster. A figure appears in front of the window, though it is unable to be determined whether it is Person of Interest 3713 or which side of the window it is on. 58 seconds. View goes entirely white and audio goes silent for two seconds. One minute, zero seconds. View seems to be from Person of Interest 3713's perspective. Their hands are shown multiple times, indicating the view to be coming from their view. Person of Interest 3713 is running from an unknown pursuer. Three sets of footsteps can be heard, through what appears to be an unnaturally large backstage. Lighting is dim and comes from an unknown source above, illuminating black curtains that appear to line every side. 1 minute, 19 seconds. After multiple turns, Person of Interest 3713 comes upon a well-lit door marked with a green exit sign at the end of a hallway. Person of Interest 3713 rushes towards it and unsuccessfully attempts to open the door. Person of Interest 3713 whispers, Por favor please, repeatedly under their breath before turning around to look at the hallway behind them. A pair of bare feet step into view from around the corner before the feed cuts out. 1 minute, 21 seconds. View goes entirely white and audio goes silent for 3 seconds. 1 minute, 24 seconds. Video suddenly resumes from the perspective of a camera focused on a stage. The stage itself is dim faint shuffling and whispering can be heard below where the audience would be. No words are able to be made out. This continues for three minutes. Four minutes, 34 seconds. Video cuts to Person of Interest 3713's perspective. Person of Interest 3713 is running through what appears to be a poorly lit backstage area. The only light is from an unknown source above. They dash behind a stack of boxes and crouch there, clutching their legs. A large number of footsteps can be heard from behind the boxes before being replaced with silence. Only Person of Interest 3713's strained breathing can be heard for 3 minutes. 7 minutes, 50 seconds. Person of Interest 3713 peeks their head out from the stack and freezes. In the darkness, a figure can be seen staring directly at Person of Interest 3713. The figure is wearing a mask of an owl. The figure stares at Person of Interest 3713 for approximately 10 seconds before taking a step back and out of view. 8 minutes, 14 seconds. 
Footsteps to person of interest 3713's left prompt them to jump out and begin running in the opposite direction. 8 minutes, 15 seconds. View goes white and audio goes silent once more, but the vague impression of a human hand can be seen in the center of the image, slowly moving downwards. 8 minutes, 38 seconds. Once again, from Person of Interest 3713's perspective, Person of Interest 3713 appears to be somewhere pitch black with the exception of a green exit sign. Person of Interest 3713 rushes towards it and fumbles for the associated door. Footsteps can be heard behind them. Person of Interest 3713 pauses to look behind. 8 minutes, 42 seconds. They turn back to the door and push it open. Stepping past the door, they collapse into an extremely dimly lit grassy clearing. The sun appears to be setting into the trees in the distance. Person of Interest 3713 lays on the ground for approximately one minute, feeling the grass and looking at the sun, which appears to have a blue tint. The sky, though black, holds no stars. 9 minutes, 49 seconds. View goes white, and audio goes silent. 10 minutes, 1 second. Three soft knocks can be heard preceding two short muffled vocalizations. 10 minutes, 4 seconds. View returns to a shot of a stage with a mumbling audience. 10 minutes, 10 seconds. Audience members are heard shushing one another as the dim stage lights go down and a singular spotlight arises, focusing in on the center of the stage. The crowd falls silent. 11 minutes, 15 seconds. The shot resumes from Person of Interest 3713's perspective in the grassy field. The sound of the door opening behind them interrupts their rest and they begin running toward the sun. 14 minutes, 49 seconds. The sun has grown noticeably larger. Person of Interest 3713 pauses to vomit. 14 minutes, 53 seconds. The view returns to the shot from the beginning where extremely dim blue light is flowing into the otherwise pitch black room through what appears to be a window. The figure at the window is still in place. Above the sound of the air conditioner, faint whimpering can be heard, along with several mumbles of the words por favor. 14 minutes, 59 seconds. The figure steps away from the window. 15 minutes, 0 seconds. The view resumes from Person of Interest 3713's perspective in which they appear to be continuing to run at the sun. The sun appears to be about three times its original size. 15 minutes, 55 seconds. At this point, the sun is nine times its original size and dark areas can be seen behind it. 16 minutes, 28 seconds. Person of Interest 3713 reaches what had been thought to have been the sun, which is revealed to be an abnormally large spotlight. They step behind it to find a large curtain that extends into the sky. Returning to the spotlight, they bang thrice on the glass and yell por qué, why, before collapsing on the ground and assuming the fetal position. Sobbing can be heard. 16 minutes, 54 seconds. The sound of rustling grass causes person of interest 3713 to quickly turn their head. The owl-masked figure from earlier is standing before the spotlight, when the spotlight appears to turn off and the view goes black. Only Person of Interest 3713 screaming can be heard at this point. 16 minutes, 57 seconds. The view returns to the room with the air conditioner sounding only for the sound of glass breaking as a figure appears to break the window. 17 minutes, 22 seconds. Person of Interest 3713 limps onto the stage from the wings. Several short murmurs are heard from the audience before Person of Interest 3713 reaches the spotlight and stands in the center of it. Person of Interest 3713 scans over the audience, their breaths deep and shuddering. 18 minutes, 2 seconds. Person of Interest 3713 stumbles slightly before slowly taking a bow, jerking and twitching several times while doing so. 18 minutes, 5 seconds. As Person of Interest 3713 rises from their bow, the audience begins to clap and cheer. Many roses are thrown onto the stage while Person of Interest 3713 holds themselves and twitches. 18 minutes, 8 seconds. Person of Interest 3713 falls to their knees and subsequently collapses to the floor, 
coughing up bile. The crowd continues to cheer. 18 minutes, 19 seconds. As the crowd continues to clap and cheer and throw roses, a hand approximately three times the size of Person of Interest 3713, attached to a proportionately sized arm, reaches down from an unseen origin above and forcefully grabs Person of Interest 3713. 18 minutes, 21 seconds. With the continuing noise of the crowd cheering in the background, the view cuts to a purple slate that says, the play has ended. 18 minutes, 26 seconds. The video ends. End transcription. Addendum 3713-4, Further Anomalous Activities. On November 2, 2024, Person of Interest 3713 was reported missing by Miss Marquez. The transcription below is their interview with Miss Marquez. Interview with Miss Marquez. Interviewer, Agent Miguel. Interviewee, Miss Marquez. Conducted, November 3rd, 2024. Notes. Interview was conducted in the living room with Miss Marquez on the couch and Agent Miguel sitting opposite them on a chair. A coffee table separates them, where the audio recorder was placed. Interview was conducted in Spanish and has been translated to English for ease of reading. Begin log. Agent Miguel. All right, I want you to tell me if Camila ever seemed to want to run away, or if you know of anything that would push her to. Miss Marquez. No, no, I don't think so. She was very open with me, even if she didn't know how to explain something. When she was upset, she would tell me, which was regrettably often. She didn't want to run away from home. She couldn't have wanted to. You can think of no influence that would have driven her away? I thought she was getting more stable. Has she ever run away before? Yes, when she was very little. What made her do that? <laughs> she was in a school play in third grade. She was doing so well, but it came to her solo. She's an amazing singer, even if she doesn't do it too often. Voice of an angel. And... And she just sat there. Everyone was looking at her. She just froze. Miss Marquez blows her nose. It was more than stage fright. I know it. You can feel these things when you're a mother. She just sat there and stared out at the audience. She didn't move. She didn't talk. She just stood there. The teacher cued her, and she looked down at the teacher. I couldn't help it. I spoke up and called to my daughter. I said, I said, honey, and she ran. She ran out the door and just kept running. Miss Marquez blows her nose again. We chased her, but nobody got her before she was out in the woods. And... And we couldn't find her. My husband called the police and got them to look for her in the forest. And they found her cut and bruised and... There were red marks around her throat. She looked pale. They told us it had to have been self-harm. But she wouldn't have done that. We just took her home, and she slept for three days. Did she tell you what happened? She was more comfortable with her dad at the time, and so he heard it. He said that she would feel comfortable to talk to me in time, and it would be better if she went at her own pace. I wanted to know, but I understood. Before it came time to... <laughs> he passed. Joaquin Marquez. He was big and strong, like you. Hard worker. He had lung cancer. Smoked. I don't know if Camila ever told me why that happened. It never felt right to ask. She became a new person when Joaquin passed. Made her own breakfast, did her homework on time, walked to the bus. Didn't talk as much. Did she ever? She had dreams ever since. She sometimes hesitated at the door, and I asked her why she didn't want to go outside. And she told me. She told me she didn't want to be watched. 
The only place she felt privacy was in the home anymore. Recently, she only did shopping at night. She said that in the day, the sun felt like it was focusing on her. When she was a toddler, she would wake up screaming. I would calm her down, and she would ask me if I was playing pretend. She thought we weren't her parents sometimes. Sometimes she didn't think anyone was anyone. And there is nothing you know that might be the cause for her leaving? No. She wouldn't run away. Any closing statements? We will find your daughter. She's coming back. I know. I know. There is something you should see. Miss Marquez is heard getting up and walking upstairs. After 30 seconds, she is heard descending the stairs and sitting back down. Plastic crinkling suggests the exchange of an item. This was in her toilet. I didn't show the police because you're more important. You know what is wrong with her, even if I don't. Please, tell me this means something to you. Several plastic crinkles are heard. This means something to us. Thank you. Find her, Miguel. Please find her. End log. Miss Marquez had passed Agent Miguel a plastic bag containing vomit, blood, both matching person of interest 3713's DNA, and eight flyers damaged by various fluids. All things printed in small text were illegible, but the most legible flyer read, Illegible Returns. The new hit, bleh, illegible, Ram Show, touring now. Touring now. Coming back, illegible, ever. Come watch. We will. Get into your positions. Auditions now over. This article has unique comments written inside of the history section. The history section is a tab on the article which allows you to see the revision history of the document. These comments, as stated, refer to uploaded files, which, in fact, were not uploaded to the document. These files are named Get Me Out of Here, Born in Falsehood, Where the Sun Is, Reduce, Reuse, Recycle, Somewhere No One Watches. Feels good to be back. I got a new microphone and then I got depressed for two months. But... Things are looking up, so, you know. This article was written by Darkstuff and Varaxis of the SCP Wiki. You can view a link to the article in the description down below. Thank you for listening. I hope you have a good day.